Noosa, beautiful Noosa, on the northern shores of the Sunshine Coast, playground for holiday makers from all over the world for decades. A place where people come to visit, where people come to live because it's so beautiful and so natural. With just a short walk from downtown Hastings Street, you can find yourself in the tranquility of the Noosa National Park and experience the wonder of, of nature at its very best. With wildlife to view in the trees and on the ground, birds and animals and wildflowers that also love to call Noosa their home. But it might not have been this way if the modern march of civilization and migration had had its own way. People have been moving to the eastern seaboard of Australia in the droves for many years and the pressure is constantly on to develop more land for housing and high rise and to allow human habitation to concentrate itself at the waterfront of our rivers and beaches, to our own peril and particularly to the peril of our natural habitat. The northern reaches and beaches of the Sunshine Coast in Queensland have been spared the normal spread of concrete and asphalt for modern man by a determined band of eco-workers diligently and persistently speaking out and standing up for the rights of the natural bush and all its powerless creatures. This little movie is dedicated to one of those eco-warriors who was born for such a time as this. <laughs> all I was was someone who appreciated nature, appreciated the bush and wanted to look after it. Now 85 years young and still spending herself for the environment and the community, Cecily Fianley has spent her entire life loving nature and sharing her enthusiasm and knowledge with all who will listen. And um, so that's, that's what happened. And then I started going up and going, visiting national parks and seeing them and appreciating just how important it is mm. to have them maintained. <laughs> oh, I started the bird observer group, that was the first one, and then there was the botanical one, well I joined that but I didn't have the time to really concentrate on too much, so and uh, Arthur Harold started that group, that was fine, then I started the walks with one of the other members, and the two of us would take turns in leading the walks around about. This was the original entrance to the National Park, and myself way back, and this was back in 1949, when I was there camping, and that, that is now right, the entrance, and it's completely different at the moment. Now we're close to the water itself, the creeks and the sandbanks and so forth, and there you get the water birds. That's the white-faced heron, one of the heron family. Others wade through the shallows, like the egrets, there are so many different water birds associated with both mangroves and river flats, right through. Oh my, oh my. Oh, this, this is really, this is what I love. And so I started painting nature. That was my art training and my love of nature and my thirst that was just, well I couldn't, couldn't get as much information as I wanted to, ever. And when you know about it, and you appreciate it, then you want to keep it and not destroy it. This is one of the things that I did. This was one to illustrate what I'd be talking about when I wrote my article for the Noosa News. It commenced when we first came up to Noosa. It was back in 1972 and continued every week 
for 30 years. That first suggestion that there be a road right around the headland was so bad that fortunately, and with the Noosa Parks Association, we managed to stop it. Well, we had to do something to prevent development ruining the beauty of the natural area. My name's Ian Seals. I'm currently the president for the Noosa Parks Association. Cecily really, though, was the was the driver and the founder of all the recreational and concept and, and educational activities that um, the Parks Association is now so famous for. Um, Cecily is still active in the organisation today, and you know, to be a significant figure in this organisation in itself says something. This is an organisation that that really has been chiefly responsible for the shaping of this part of the world. One of the things that uh, I really appreciated right from the very beginning was nature, particularly in that Lamington area. And then when I married Jim and we were out at Upper Brookfield, of course I got into the church and where the children came, the Sunday school. So I was a Sunday school teacher. And I, I could see so many things happening in the natural world that many times I would bring that theory into, look how wonderful God is in creating and how fantastic. The more you know about nature, the more amazed that you are at how it all interrelates, how every little section of, of bird eats a particular type of animal or type of insect or something like that. It really is fantastic. And I've continued with that interest right through my life.